Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jordine. If you're new here, today's video is going to be a wear test and review on the new Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation. Is that the name of it? It's the Vanish Liquid. I'll put the correct name, of course, in the title. But today, you guys, today we're going to be actually wearing this to test it out. I've worn it once already and I'm not sure exactly how I feel. But you guys, I have samples of the foundation. Um, if you do not know, I do work for Sephora, so we're supposed to be getting it, so that's the reason I didn't buy it. Um, but we're going to be testing out the Vanish because it's supposed to be fuller coverage, longer wearing than the original Vanish stick foundations. So if you're interested in that, keep on watching. So I zoomed in a little bit closer. So I got samples of the foundation, like I mentioned before, and I just wanted to show you guys something because... I don't know if I'm tripping or not, but I feel like I really don't have a shade in this foundation. So in the sticks, I have them here. I wear, I can go between golden almond and almond if I need to. So let me show you almond. So that's almond. So it's a little bit more red. And keep in mind, this is a cream foundation, so it's a little bit more saturated um, with pigment. So once you blend it out, of course, it looks fine. And then this is golden almond. So there we go. So that is the pigment straight on. I'm gonna leave them just like that because I want you guys to see the actual undertones of it. And I'll do the liquids on this side. First one we're gonna go in with is warm almond right here. Warm almond. Next, we have Golden Almond, which I thought was going to be my shade. So Golden Almond. They're supposed to match the foundation, um, but I don't think they match exactly. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. Warm Almond, Golden Almond. Let's just take this off. Almond, and doesn't that look a little bit lighter? to you than golden almond so we have almond after that we have sable which is the shade that i actually wore over the weekend so sable so that's sable i'm just gonna put it right here on my chin because i don't have time we have walnut right doesn't that look orange so that's a walnut chestnut which is a little bit too red for me. And then the last shade is, let's do it here, Espresso, which is a little bit too dark. So the way that I match myself, I want to match all of my tones. I kind of even it out. So of course I have a little bit of hyperpigmentation, but as you can see, I have more of a golden undertone. So that is what I match when I'm doing my foundation. If I go too dark, it's just going to look very, very weird with my chest and neck. So um, I just try to balance out all my tones. I don't try to go lighter or I try to just balance my tones um, just to make sure my undertones are correct. So those are what the swatches are looking like. And right now I don't feel like I have any color. Um, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. So I already have my skin prepped with um, skincare. Because the last time I wore this, I felt like it was really dry on my skin. And I normally prep my skin really well. But I just felt it was a little a matte. It was matte. It's supposed to be a satin finish. But on me, I felt like it was matte. Um, so yeah, those are the foundations off. So I think I'm going to go in with Sable um, just for this video's sake. I'm going to prime my face. So they're saying that you don't have to use primer with this foundation, but let me just pull up the planes while I'm putting primer on one side of my face. So let's do this side. I'm using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty. See if it makes any difference. So this foundation comes in... 32 shades or is it 36? Let me get my information correct before I'm over here telling you guys stuff. So it retails for $56, which is hella expensive. Um, and it comes in 32 shades. So I was right, 32 shades. And so far the reviews are not good on Sephora.com. But it's supposed to be a highly concentrated liquid foundation designed to deliver instant full coverage with 
Just a half a pump, no primer needed. Coverage is full, finish is natural, formulation is liquid, it's supposed to be good for normal combination and oily skin types. So I am normal to dry, um, so that's probably the problem that I was having, but I made sure I put some oil on my face today, so we should be good. Um, it's supposed to be, you know, free of parabens, vegan, cruelty free. It is supposed to be a second skin creating a smooth, flawless canvas, light reflecting microfairs, blur, and create a soft focus finish. The non communogenic formula is waterproof, transfer proof, and sweat proof. It is it is kind of transfer proof. I'm not I'm not gonna lie about that. Because I did try that out. Okay. So let's just go in because I don't got time. So I used it with a Sony Cash Beauty Sponge on Saturday when I wore it. And you guys, the sponge, it was hard to blend. I was like, what is going on? Like, am I tripping? I would not recommend that you use a sponge, a beauty sponge, when applying this foundation. Definitely go in with a brush. So I'm just gonna use this one wild brush. It's the first one I saw. And I'm going to start applying this foundation. So you're supposed to put on like half a pump of foundation. Not a lot is needed. That is what the directions say. It's supposed to be, again, highly pigmented. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit and if I feel like I need more, I will adjust. So this is stable. Like, am I tripping? I just feel like my face looks so dull when I put that on. It was really hard for me finding the color. So I feel like that coverage is pretty nice, but I just feel like my overall complexion looks a little dull, like a little ashy. Dull is a nice way of saying it, but I feel like I look ashy. Oh no. This is what my complexion looks like. I feel like it looks pretty smooth. What do you guys think? Leave it down in the comments below. Let me know what your opinions are. What color do you think I should have went in with? Um, I just feel like I don't have any color. I'm just gonna go ahead and complete the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna go in my Veil Translucent Powder just to set. I love this powder, it's so good. So I feel like around my mouth looks a little dull. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can tell. I feel like it looks a little ashy. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of Sephora Collection Micro Smooth Powder in the shade 60. Yeah, I think that looks better. All right, I am back. My makeup is done. Um, this is what my face is looking like. I did set it with setting spray. So let me just go on with the things that I use. Fenty Matte Stick to contour, just to give me a little bit more color. Um, I did go overboard with a little bit of contouring today because I felt a little ashy, like I said. And then I went with my powder uh, to set that. And I used the Milani Earth Glow Press Powder to bronze my skin. Um, I really like that. And for my eyes and like my highlight, I have on my Spice Market palette like always, but these are the main colors. So I have that all over my lid, this in the inner corner, and then I have that as my blush, the same pink one, blush, highlight, and a little bit of this as well. And then this is what we have for the lip. I did Sephora Collection Lip Story in number 12. It's this pink. I just did it really sheer. And Anastasia Lip Gloss and Estella. So let me zoom in so you guys can see. So this is what my face is looking like. Primer, and I used the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And no primer. For some reason, I actually like the no primer side a little bit better. I feel like it's more smooth. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but right here is settling a little bit more on the primer side. And I actually really like this primer, but for some reason, this one looks more smooth. You guys can tell, right? It looks smooth. I have hella highlighter on today. But who cares? So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in natural daylight. I'm probably gonna wear it for about 12 hours to be honest, because I have a work day today and I have training and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end of the day. Okay guys, it's freezing out here, but I wanted to show you guys what this looks like in natural sunlight. I've had it on for about five hours now and this is the side with primer. This is the side without primer. Right now, they both got a lot of creases in the smile line. Still not 100% on the color. I don't know, it's not my favorite right now. Hey guys, I am back. It's the end of the day. It is currently 8.57. So how long have I had on this makeup? It's going on 
11 hours. It's going on in 11 hours right now. Um, let me just zoom in. So this is the side with primer, and then this is the side without primer. There is um, a little bit of a difference. I feel like it looks very smooth on this face, and then on this side, and then this side, it looks kind of like heavier, um, but it's not horrible. So I think I've had my thoughts kind of, you know, gathered together for <laughs> this foundation. This foundation is definitely a love hate at the moment. Um, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about it. Um, definitely some creasing in my smile lines, which I am not a fan of. And it definitely creased earlier than other foundations that I have. And I feel like it creased in my smile lines because it was drier in that area on my complexion. And again, I have normal to dry skin. So the fact that this is more of that long wearing type of foundation, um, it dried out a little bit more matte on me. I don't know what you guys think, but I feel like it's a little bit too drying on my skin. So that's why I'm getting that smile lines. My skin works a little bit better with more radiant formulas. It, it just works better with my smile lines. As for like this side going up, I feel like my skin looks really good. It looks really smooth. There is no breaking apart or anything of the foundation. Um, no transfer, no nothing. So I don't know how to feel about it. There was slight shine, so on my forehead you see that shine breakthrough, but I feel like that looks good. And like my nose looks good. It's just around here maybe because I put a little bit of um, extra powder around there too. It just made everything a little bit more heavy. Um, but the reason that I put powder around my mouth is because I felt like the color was really dull. And that's the issue that I'm having with this foundation. I feel like for the deeper end of the line, these foundations is going ashy, 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 orange, red, dark. That's how I feel like it's working for me. Like there's no color that I can choose personally for myself that looks perfect. Now this color worked out. I asked my, some of my coworkers how they felt about it. Um, a lot of people just said that it was more neutral than what they're used to seeing me wear. Most of the time I wear more golden tones because that is what works with my skin tone. Um, so this was a little bit more neutral and I felt like my concealer didn't really balance with it because my concealer was more yellow in the center of my face. Um, but it does not look horrible. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna wear it a couple more times um, just to see exactly how I feel about it and I'll let you guys know like an update video if it's something that I will continue wearing. But for now, I don't know if I can recommend it, especially for people who are looking for my recommendation for shades or anything. It's just not, I don't think I have a perfect shade. I really don't. So if you were coming here for me to help you out with a shade, I am so sorry about that. But I just want to see how this touches up because that main concern is my smile lines. So I'm just going to put a little bit of my Sephora Micro Smooth Powder and see if it touched up. Um, FYI, I did not touch up throughout the day when I was wearing this. So let's see. It, it touches up really nicely actually um wow yeah that looks good so it'll probably work out if let me zoom in look it looks brand new so that was my only concern with my smile line i felt like my smile lines broke apart the quickest but the touch up worked out it doesn't look cakey or heavy or anything so this might be a foundation that i can you know wear for like events or something and just bring up bring my powder with me if I feel like I need a touch up, um, any creasing happening. But at the moment, like I said, I am in a love-hate relationship with the foundation because of the color choices and just how it lays on my skin because I have normal to dry skin. If you have more oily skin or combination skin, I feel like it might work a little bit better for you. Um, but at the moment, I don't know if I would recommend it, especially for the price is 56 um, and at that price point I would want to love something in order to recommend it to you guys so if you have any questions just leave it down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you but for right now this ain't it for me it is not it yeah <laughs> so that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have not, I would love for you to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Definitely help me out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.